Let's talk to Mel Elder from Australia. Mel, how are you doing today? Look, Hello, I Mel. To talk about... oh, yeah, you can you hear me? The... Yes, we Hi. can. Yeah, you got me? Yep. Yeah. Yes, yeah. what would you like to talk about? I was wanted to talk about what you were talking about to do with the purity culture. I'm an atheist, but I was brought up in a Christian family. In fact, my father is a retired Uniting Church minister, like a pastor. And I was taught this real big purity culture. Like, in fact, m my sister and I were told if we got pregnant, we'd be booted out of home and they'd never talk to us again. So it created a really big, huge, enormous problem when we were first having sex. I mean, and they there was all this sort of also talk about, like, if women got sexually assaulted or raped, that how it was their fault which was really problematic for me because, like, from the age of four up to about the age of 16, I was sexually assaulted by members of the congregation and the elders of the church. So my first time having sex, it, it, I, it, I was really, really messed up and it didn't go well. Um, I mean, to this day, I, I am in... I have a, psychological, you know, a psychologist and a psychiatrist. I have PTSD. But it caused so many problems. That's why I am so against this purity culture because it creates harm, you know. So, yeah, absolutely. I can't imagine how that must have affected you. And obviously, you've said it yourself. You've needed plenty of psychological help as a result. And I would imagine that if your upbringing had been a little bit more sex positive, if you'd had a better sex education, then don't. Uh, you might have been able to, at least as, I, I don't know what the situation with you as a child was, but I have heard lots of instances of people getting abused as a child and not knowing what was happening, or not knowing that they were supposed to say no, or even instances where the kids didn't know the proper names for their genitalia, so they could not communicate what was happening to them effectively. Like, they, well, they couldn't even uh, say uh, what was happening. I mean, in my case, I mean, I, I knew what was happening, but I didn't think I'd be believed. I thought, I mean, I actually thought, and I actually remember thinking this is even when I was so young, the first time at four years old, that my parents must have known because they handed me to those people for them to look, over, look after me. So I thought my parents must have known they must have been in on it, and that was just what I was at. I was expected to do, or I thought if I said anything would be believed. And and this was sort of compounded. When I was 11, I actually had a complete stranger sexually assault me. Um, first time anything happened that was not based on the religious people. And I told my parents at this time, and then the police and my parents blamed me for it. And you can imagine that as an 11-year-old child, Thinking, yeah. I mean, I I was really messed up by that. I mean, I've had, like, when I was an older teenager and all through my life, I've had multiple, like, suicidal attempts because I just felt like such a piece of shit because I was blamed for something that I had no control over, you know? So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that made it a whole hell of a lot. But I knew what was happening. I just didn't think I could say anything, which made it worse, I think. Yeah. yeah, that's that is so awful. And I think that we can all agree that in a much more sex positive, sex education positive world, that yeah. kind of thing happens. I would happen significantly less, I would imagine. Oh, yeah. be because yeah. there isn't I mean, this I'm emphasis on. I, I even at such a young age, the idea that a child could be seeking sexual attention from a stranger is is absurd. It's absurd. But I with think. a purity culture mindset, especially one that is biblically based, it follows that that might be the mindset that somebody might come out of that with. And that's mm -hmm. just 
just so fucked up. I don't I don't have any other way to describe that. No, and one of the the other harms in this also, you were talking about how you might find it. You know, you you thought that others wouldn't believe you because uh, uh, for whatever, but there there's a lot of of cognitive dissonance that goes on when someone who is seen as an upstanding figure in a community gets accused of something horrendous right and there's a lot of mental blocks that that are that people put up to say no they couldn't possibly do anything like that they're a man of god and they are willing to do anything including apparently uh throw kids testimonies under the bus uh in order to maintain that image of this person uh being that pure person that they want everyone to think they are um and and yeah, this is one of those harms also of, of, of uh, purity culture, the idea that someone is so pure that they are beyond uh, even considering accusing them of this. How how could you even think that they could do something like this when they have shown that they are so holy and that they are so pure? Um, yeah. so I, 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 I feel for you. That that hurts and that hits right here. Yeah. Thank you and for sharing so with I us. Agree. I, I agree because, like, I've got four adult daughters. There, are, I've got four daughters who are now adult, but from the age of four, I taught them comprehensive sex ed, and I said to them repeatedly that no one has got the right to touch your body, not even me. You have the right to say no. So I, I told them straight out, you know, that if somebody touches you, you tell me, I will deal with it. I'll call the police. I'll get something done. I told them they had the right to the body, and I said to them as they were growing up as teenagers, I said, if you want to go on the pill, I'll take you to the doctors, no questions asked. I said, if you turn up and you rock up with an STD or you're pregnant, I said, you know what, I'm not going to judge you, I'm just going to love you and be there to support you in whatever you want to do. I made it very clear, and I said to them that nobody, even people in authority, don't have that right over you, because, I, I'm sorry, I, um... I'm getting emotional. I'm really sorry, but I didn't want to. You are just fine. Understandable. Yeah. Yeah. It it is amazing. I didn't want any of them to suffer like I suffered. And I don't want that for any other person. I don't care what their gender is. I don't want any other person. This is why I hate purity culture and I am fighting it with everything I've got in me because I don't want no other person, nobody should ever have to go through feeling ashamed if someone sexually assaults you or feeling ashamed. If you want sex, if you want to have sex, you shouldn't feel shame for that. If it's consensual and there's enthusiastic consent and, you know, everyone's all good, then whatever you want to do with your body, it should be your decision. It should not be anybody else's. And I hate the fact that there's a group of people that are trying to control what people do and that. So that's why I wanted to call in because I just really relate to what you were saying. You guys are wonderful. And I'm sorry. I'm really. No, <laughs> no, we appreciate sorry. you Don't calling. This sorry. is great. It and is... and we're, we're glad to hear. I'm glad to hear. I, I yes. shouldn't speak for anybody else. I'm glad to hear that you're taking such proactive steps with your daughters and your family and Absolutely. teaching them about, you know, you don't even get a hug from a family member unless you say it's okay, you know, and that's, that's, that's yeah. a wonderful thing. Yeah. And the other part of that, that you said that really hit home for me is that no authority should be beyond uh, being reported, right? Absolutely. Even if somebody is a, a authority member in a church or a, a teacher or anything, nobody has that kind of authority over you and it's nice to hear that you're willing to stand by them uh if they have if they have something to say about that to you so Absolutely. thank you for yeah. being one of the steps in the right direction I've already, done, I've already done that like a couple of years ago i had like before i'm an atheist now but when i was still a christian i was in the salvation army church and there was a young girl 20 years old who was a single parent and her father had raped her that's how she had the baby right that's that's, that she had the child and kept it because, but her father was the father of her baby. But the male chaplain of the Salvation Army Church was sexually abusing her, and I told the church members they knew about it and didn't want to do anything about it, which made me so angry. So rather than wait, you know, because they all knew and they all knew what he was doing to this girl, and they were just, you know, going, who cares? And apparently this guy had done it to other young girls, so I went and reported it to Ugh. the police and I made sure that there was some kind of police act because I wasn't, I said, you know, I'll, this guy was a repeat sexual offender, so nobody else was going to do anything. I, I saw it and I stepped in. 
but because I couldn't, I saw this girl being, you know, young woman being sexually abused, and I again, you know, like after her father sexually abused her, and she had a kid by her father, which is fucked up. But I mean, like when, so I I stepped in and called the police. So I and I go out and like on the internet and talk to other young women, and um, if I hear stuff like that, I will report it to the authorities because and. Or other young men or young people of non-gender specific. I won't let anybody else. I, I view this as my purpose in life is to stop this from happening to other people. You know what I mean? Yeah, that is, uh, Mel, honestly, you are awesome. It is amazing to hear about you sort of breaking this cycle of abuse yeah. and being proactive in helping other people in that situation. That's amazing. You're awesome. You're amazing. You're getting lots of love in the live chat uh, and plenty oh. of love from us because you are, you're awesome. Thank you so much for calling in. And before we move on, oh. I would be remiss if I did not mention you brought it up right away. You got the psychological help that you needed, which is so important to victims of abuse. I'm sure you and would say that. Yeah, I'm it's sure that you I've would. Been, you know, I've got PTSD, so well, you know, um, so I, I would get ongoing help. But I love you guys, and thank you so much. You, what you've been saying today has actually really helped me. So thank you, you know, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank for you, calling Mel. In. Thank you for calling. Yes. And I, um, uh, yeah, I'm I know, sorry. Uh, just go f yes, go for it. Yeah. Man. Just real quick, I wanted to say if you are watching this, if you have had trauma like this or any other problems like this in your life, Secular Therapy Project, look it up. Go there, seculartherapy.org. You will be able to find a therapist, a professional, uh, a mental health professional, that's the word I was looking for, who is not going to inundate you with religious dogma. They're not going to give you any of that crap. And uh, as somebody who has seen a secular therapist, just having somebody acknowledge your religious related trauma and not try to fight you on the religious aspect of it. It's huge. It's mm -hmm. a huge relief. It is incredibly important. Please, if you need therapy, go to seculartherapy.org, seek help. That's, I just felt like that needed, yeah, that needed to be yeah, plugged. No, you took the words out of my mouth. Yeah. 